Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can significantly improve the performance of Link in your .NET applications and also expand where it can be used, allowing for more flexible solutions. Now, why would you want to do something like that? Well, because Link is kind of known for not being really that performant. In fact, if you want to improve some of the biggest bottlenecks in your applications, if you have them, of course, is you remove link and you translate that to the raw version of that link statement. So for loops, calculations, whatever that is. Now, what I'm going to show you in this video is still using a technique that looks exactly like link. We're going to have extension methods on enumerables and we're going to be able to have the exact same experience, but we're just immediately going to get significantly better performance. So let's see how we can achieve that. If you like our content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a similar console application and I want to start with the simplest problem, which is I have an array of numbers in this case from one to 2000 and I want to get the sum of them. So the simplest solution to that would be, of course, to say array.sum and use this link extension method to calculate the sum. Now, if you've been paying attention, especially in .NET 7, you would know that sum, max, min, and average were methods whose performance was significantly improved. In some cases, we're talking huge performance improvements. And of course, from 7 to 8, because 8 is faster, there was a smaller performance boost as well. Now, if I quickly say get the sum and put it in the console and just print it just to see the value, you're going to get this value very, very quickly. And there is nothing fundamentally wrong with this. This was pretty much sped up to a pretty good standard. And how this was achieved is explained in great detail in Stephen Tobe's performance improvements blog for .NET 7. And as you can see, some was improved significantly than average, min, and max. Now, not everything was improved on the same level, but those things that were improved significantly were mainly improved because of the introduction of SIMD. Now, you don't need to exactly know what SIMD is. All you need to know is it means simple instruction multiple data. Basically, it's a form of parallel processing on the hardware level. That's why, actually, if we go in any of these methods now in link and we go into the root method, you're going to see an if check, maybe not here, uh, but maybe in some here you will see it. If vector dot is hardware accelerated, this will allow us to do some really, really fancy stuff and try to vectorize the operation to significantly improve its performance. You don't need to know what it is. All you need to know is you just automatically get it and you have the exact same logic. However, Link is a bit limited in terms of where this can be used because different guarantees need to be maintained in different places and you need to have compatibility with the way the method worked previously and how it works now. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and create a benchmark class and I'm going to add a benchmark just to compare the for loop version of this operation and the link version of this operation to see how much faster we are. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called Deep Dive into Modular Monoliths. And it's a direct sequel from the Getting Started delivered a few weeks ago by our Dallas or Steve Smith. Steve did an amazing job with that first course and you loved it. So we had to get out the Deep Dive one as fast as possible just to see how the whole application is completing and being ready to go to production with more features and more modules to have a complete modular monolith, which in case you don't know, I think it's the Goldilocks zone between microservices and old bad monoliths. It's where most people, and by most, I mean almost everyone should start before they feel like they have to go anywhere else, maybe microservices or maybe even further. Both the deep dive and the getting started should be taken by every .NET developer working in modern .NET. There's so many best practices you're going to learn there. And to celebrate the launch of the deep dive, you can use code modular20 at checkout or use the link in the description to claim 20% off that course. And you can also add the Getting Started course in your basket for a massive discount if you don't have that already. And on top of that, we also have a From Zero to Hero Modular Models bundle now, which allows you to combine both courses with a 20% discount. Okay, now back to the video. Here we go. So I have 10,000 items in this array. So this array is cached and initialized only once. And then here I have a for loop where I'm calculating the length ahead of time on the for loop and I have the span implicitly converted from the array, and I operate on those, I return the result, and that is it. And then in the end, I have the link version, and I'm returning the link version as a result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say benchmark runner dot run, and I'm going to run those two benchmarks to see where I stand. So let's go ahead and turn this into release mode, 
and wait for a minute to see where we are. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. And as you can see, the for loop I wrote 2.2 microseconds, the link version, which is very optimized and it's using that vectorization, 592 nanoseconds. So around four times faster, which you wouldn't expect link to be, but some methods have been treated with this update, which means they're just faster than what you can write because yeah, technically you could write hardware accelerated code, but do you know how to do that? I don't. And it's a very, very advanced type of computing. You might as well use link. So now the instruction is, oh, I can use some methods of link, but not all of them because not all of them are equally as fast. And I also can't use them in every type. And that is true if you stick with the BCL, what's in .NET. But if you branch out to libraries, you actually have quite a lot more options. And in fact, Microsoft did not really come up with this idea of improving link. They did see this feature implemented in libraries and they basically re-implemented and rewrote it for themselves in .NET. Now, one of the libraries that can do that is simd link. So I'll go ahead and add this NuGet package. And what's amazing for this NuGet package is you can simply have a global using statement of use simd link and that will update your code to use the new link version basically everywhere because the names of the methods are the same. So the way you would say dot sum is using the CMD version of dot sum. And now that's exactly my code, but because I have the using statement, I'm using the fast version. Now what I'm going to do before I show you all the features, just to sell you on the performance, is I'm going to bring an extra benchmark that uses the SIMD version and compares everything together. So here we go, we have the benchmark now. I'm writing it this way. You would never really write it this way. You just do array.sum, but because I have both traditional link and this new version of link in the same file, I don't wanna have any clashes between what's using what. So I'm gonna use this and go and run the benchmark and see where we are now. Okay, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, again, the 4x difference, but now we're almost half, we're actually about half from that fast link execution. And we're not gonna go too deep into the implementation, but if we just quickly scrape the surface, you're gonna see that if I go into the sum call method, I have the same is how to accelerate it logic, and then a bunch of really advanced stuff that I don't understand. What I do understand, however, is that it's very easy to introduce this to a project if you want to keep using link and have it be very, very fast. And why do I say that? Well, because it doesn't just update the performance of some average, min and max, but it actually introduces a method for long sum specific to longs, min max that returns a tuple so you can get both the min and the max on the same execution. And that is really, really cool. Actually, let me just quickly show you here. So you want to say min and then you want to say int max over here, get min max. And if I pass down, I don't know, an int array or something, I can say array dot min max and of course return. And I can get both values with one execution, which is really, really cool and really, really useful. You do this twice, but now we can do it once and it's super efficient because it actually does both at the same time. It doesn't call two methods, but it's able to take the source as a span and calculate both at one execution. Super, super cool. This also improves the performance of contains and sequence equal. Very, very useful. And it's applicable to byte, s byte, short, u short, long, u long, float, and double. And on top of that, you can use it on list of type T, span of type T, read only span of type T, memory of type T, read only memory of type T on top of array of type T. You can use it basically everywhere that it makes sense to be used. So if this was, of course, a, a span of an integer, well, you wouldn't really be able if this was an array or enumerable to do this, but now you can say sum, you can say long sum, all that's coming from SIMD acceleration. And then you have many other methods, again, long sum, contains, and so on. Many of those are coming from SIMD and they're extremely optimized. Now, how come these people are writing code faster than Microsoft? Well, okay, the concept of writing faster code than Microsoft is not unique, but it's actually very interesting if you start diving into the justification because the way they achieve it is they are effectively kind of breaking compatibility in a way with traditional link, which Microsoft, of course, 
can't do to give you better performance when they can. Now, of course, that does mean that bringing this library in, you're adding this potential point of failure and you're depending on a library to give you the ability to do some of the most basic operations like some average min and max. But from what I can see, the library is well supported and robust and is still being updated. On top of that, the people working on it are members of the community for a long time and very, very knowledgeable. So I wouldn't really fear trying this at least to see how my application will behave, especially if you have link heavy scenarios and you don't want to go ahead and just replace everything. Again, it focuses more on those methods on a calculation basis. So again, averages, mean, max, whatever, sum, and so on. But those are some of the ones I see quite a lot. So it is basically a free performance boost if you can bring this in and try it out. I will put a link for the project in the description. If you like it, please give it a star and do read the readme.md to see how they went about giving this performance and what the limitations are, because in my opinion, it's very, very interesting. But now I want to know from you, have you heard of this concept before and are you using a package that does the same thing, but maybe better or with better support? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.